welcome to the second edition of the high risk tech talk guys uh, we hope you're safe and you're taking all the necessary precautions in these uh, unprecedented times uh, my name is ubhor guys uh, i'm a part of the marketing function here at highrisk.com and i'm extremely extremely excited to have all of you join us here so uh, we today have the pleasure of conducting uh, the second edition of this series in collaboration with the tech leadership at gs Uh, Dr. Prakash uh, PKS, who's the associate principal at uh, ZS, comes with an extraordinary experience, guys, um, of, of 12 years across various domains, uh, w- which includes uh, healthcare, manufacturing, pharmaceutical, etc. Et and uh, you know, Dr. Prakash leads the advanced data science practice in patient analytics and customer-centric marketing at ZS. Uh, he's published his research in leading journals such as IEEE, Trans. EJOR and IPJR, and he recently also got recognized as 40 under 40 data scientists in India by Analytics India magazine. So, guys, if you have any questions at all about data science, or if you're really interested in the field of data science, this is the right, this is the best person to ask anything at all. Prakash sir will be taking as many questions as possible, and obviously towards the end of the webinar, we'll also take some in the middle, but majorly in the towards the end of the webinar. So. Uh, Without any further ado, guys, I think uh, I'd like to hand this over to Dr. Prakash. He'll take this forward from here. So over to you, sir. Thanks, Vibhor. Can you guys hear me fine? Just say yes. Perfect. All right. Uh, so what I'm going to cover today. So before I get started, I think I would really like to thank Hirest for inviting me and take uh, one of this topic, which I'm really fascinated about. uh how do we take uh solutions from innovation to industrialization and uh, again there is a lot of components which involved when we start thinking about a problem uh or a solution in general where we uh, take the solution from a framing which is a starting from formulation part of it to the deployment and there is a lot of internal and external component involved into it so i i'm potentially going to cover some bit around it uh, and we'll go through few use cases as well which we have done as part of a data science team within within zs uh, so feel free to ask any questions uh, i will try to take questions in between or we can actually take it toward the end of this session all right with that let me first uh introduce to you guys uh, about what what zs is uh, so the zs is uh, primarily a end to end analytical consulting firm and it's a uh, 35 year old company uh, with focus around business consulting technology and operations so we take a problem from a strategy where conceptualization to to till the end of operationalization part of things uh we have served more than 1200 clients uh in more than 30 plus different industry areas in 90 countries we have roughly 29 offices the last what i have heard uh with uh, more than 7000 uh, people supporting us uh, in different uh, capability group so before i start about uh about the data science itself Uh, what exactly make uh, the, what exactly is required to make ai work right uh, that's that's one of the core theme is so the way we look at ai is core around four core dimensions and uh, that's what uh, we actually call as a zest which is one of the framework which we actually use which we actually use as a ai engagement model with lot of our clients uh the first of of zest the z is more focus on shaping the offering which actually require taking a co- concept framing it into what is required to that particular concept right so so mo- mostly focusing on problem formulation and the kind of skills you actually require to to do a, a very strong problem formulation is involve a lot of domain uh, expertise lot of horizontal information across the things so we focus a lot on the advisory service on this lot of training potentially involved as well to because you need to also let the people who want to convert or was is actually thinking about a problem how they can actually think and then uh, 
they need to understand the lay of land right so you need to work very very closely in tandem uh, to shape any any solution the second component is experiment of course uh, you need to then take the problem you need to have a lab setting where you are able to conduct a poc and prove the concept that it it is doable it's actually adding a value uh, but once you actually prove that particular value you need to take to a scaling uh, part of the things so the, that the zest the s actually focus on the scaling a solution from a poc uh, which involve a lot of deployment uh, components uh, in general and is that sufficient not necessary we still need to make uh, the solution adopt uh, in, in that company or in any company you are actually working with and that required a lot of transformation uh, and it's it's a transformation ar across a mindset uh, which 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 involved so I, i will talk about this a little bit more but that's one of the framework which we actually are, are using now if you look from an ads as a uh, specifically specifically the advanced data science uh, as a track within within zs uh, we are roughly 300 plus data scientist big data and ml engineer which actually focus on uh, creating product and solutions we have a uh, presence in gurgaon pune and bangalore bangalore is one of our dedicated ai coe uh, office which which uh, focus around developing the ai solutions uh, and product for for uh, life sciences and non life sciences uh, client uh, we have uh, focused on more than 200 different ai related project i will cover few of them in the today's session uh, with spanning across 10 plus different industries and uh, supporting more than 50 clients as of now so with with that uh, maybe let me start with uh, one of the problem or uh, so all of you guys must have at least heard one of them or or have used one of them uh, which involve amazon or google home or siri or duero os so if if you are uh, use that solution and if i going to ask uh, any any of these devices hey device tell me a joke right so in a back end there is a lot of processing which is going on so if if you have if you are building this kind of system how would you break down a problem you can either use a chat or qna just to answer uh, what what component is required uh, to make this system smart or make this smart speaker so i will just take a minute or two uh, so that you guys can write your answers okay so audible okay so have a vr base chat box using lex got it so let's break down the component right uh, so when when you are so i just uh, went to i i used alexa right and i say hey alexa tell me a joke so and he has to return a joke to me uh, as as a device so what exactly he the alexa as a device is doing internally to make that happen so i am hearing uh, the audible is one one component of it you need a nlp is a second component of it okay all right uh, got it okay so what what actually happening uh, in the process right so as as some of you mentioned audio is one of them right so the audio you can actually relate it Uh, you can break it down into two different component at least uh, with, with these devices the so first one is uh, wake word so when you say hey alexa that that's the wake word for uh, alexa uh, and it end up start listening uh, the next thing you are going to ask it so so need to create a wake word uh, or trigger a word so if if it heard the specific word the system trigger the second uh, thing which again uh, mentioned in terms of audio part of things is tell me a joke right so it it what happens is it takes that audio convert that into a text uh, text form so the conversion uh, or translation uh, part part of things which which comes into picture so once you get the audio to text conversion the third uh, component involves identifying the intent 
so what exactly uh, you are asking for so is it a joke or time or music or weather so it it in this case you are specifically asking for a joke uh, so it identify that intent uh, from from that text and once it know the intent it end up triggering an action based based on that intent so you see i mean just to solve this problem you end up assembling multiple different objects uh, and you end up creating this a pipeline or ai uh, pipeline where all these things are working together to give you an answer now this this seems to be a uh, standard pipeline and can be easily extended for other use cases right so the pipeline doesn't change is the last step what the specialized uh, execution step part of things actually become uh, uh, become distinct so if you are asking for a joke or you are asking to set a clock the action is going to take different but at the end of the day it's following the same set of ai pipeline and can be utilized for a lot of different functions so the when we think about a pipeline uh, overall or think about a solution it's not one component is a lot of different component which need to be bring together and it's not necessary everything is going to be a data science uh, to start with it's a combination of data science and it's a combination of of lot of big data technologies uh, which uh, which is also involved so in 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 this case i mean if you take a example or if you just take the current example of alexa i mean uh, and if what is happening when you ask tell me a joke it's take that information and send it to a server through an internet and at that particular server there is a lot of concurrent user potentially asking for a lot of different uh, different type of queries so it has to handle the concurrency uh and that become a scale aspect uh in, in this uh, specific use case uh so, and then there is a lot of intent recognition right nlp someone has mentioned a lot of algorithm associated with commitment into picture how we can actually identify the intent for a complex statements into picture this one is much much simpler uh, how do we understand the uh, the the uh, syntactic context for for the statement as well if the people are talking about in in a flow so they ask something but then they ask something related to the first question then how it actually take up into into picture so so you definitely have to understand a lot around the data science part of it but there is a lot uh, which which need to also think around the big data so once we do a poc we say that this algorithm very good in identifying the intent uh, but when when but that is not the end of the solution once once we prove that concept we need to ensure and start solving it uh, from a deployment perspective that how how this solution can be scaled uh, how this uh, how we are going to serve uh, the output to the different consumer and there are different complexities which which comes into picture uh, for 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 bringing this but this is still as i mentioned the, when we think about the whole framework these are definitely two important component but they again doesn't uh, define the success for any solution there are uh, much more uh, things need to be uh, thought about and that's where you see the transformation uh, things comes into picture uh, as well so considering that most of you are analytics uh, background i just try to represent what what is actually required uh, to make uh, ai work uh, so first component again is the right problem so getting uh, you picking a problem which is very very important uh, from from any business perspective uh, where if uh, if if uh, so that the problem has a value at the end of the day again to solve that problem uh, you definitely require a right data access uh, you require a right tech stack and require a right ecosystem so that's why it's exponential uh, in in this if you don't have it it's almost impossible to serve uh, or deploy a solution another component which is very important which uh, which is going to make or break uh, any any industrialization solution is, is the uh, innovation to industrialization culture itself so is the is the is there a culture uh, within within an industry uh, or a uh, we where they are actually thinking about uh 
solving a problem in a different way right so that that's also is not an easy thing when you when you go into industry because they have their own way to work and any distortion actually require a lot it require a lot of transformation in general and and it, if you start doing a lot of distortion you will start seeing a lot of resistance as well right that's where the inertia comes into picture so if if a firm has a very high resistance to change uh, it would be very high to very hard to deploy a solution or basically take a solution even if you are able to prove the concept is very right they are not going to adopt it and if that happens then it's it's it will again it's it's a uh, good solution but it cannot be industrialized in in that scenario all right uh now with, with that i'm uh, i i'm going to just switch the mode and potentially will just look at few different uh we will actually look at few different use cases uh, so i'm i'm going to just switch to one to ai calorie all right so this so this is just one one of the uh, so ai gallery is one of the tool which we are actually just utilize to simplify some of the use cases which we have worked on and uh, you you can see uh, the, so the focus area from from a gs has been how we can combine the ai and different uh, different areas and uh, currently we do focus a lot on personalization so personalization is one of our core theme uh, and uh, within life sciences and non life sciences uh, we do focus a lot on the commercial planning and the commercial planning actually involved uh, the optimization related uh, problem that uh, how much should i spend uh, next year in which channel i should spend at the end of the day which is going to increase the revenue for me uh dynamic targeting again it's is is very very uh, commercial activity then we do spend a lot on trial design and operations and i think most of you guys now understand uh, because of covid uh, that how long does it take uh, even to create a drug uh, it's it's uh, it's a very expensive process very time consuming process uh and that's where i think a lot of uh, industries right now of our industries are struggling to deliver it on uh, and they are actually working really hard to deliver that uh, uh in in such a short time span so so we do focus on a lot of use cases related to trial design and operation which actually involve uh, designing uh, a trial uh, monitoring a trial trial recruitment Uh, where where you actually optimize what is the right patient you need to uh, get uh, on on the trial itself so that's uh, again, again one of the uh, core areas for us and cross enterprises again one of the uh, core area which we focus on so which is uh, other than life sciences uh, we we do focus on high tech related uh, use cases we uh, do focus on transport uh, transport and hospitality uh, we have financial services and cpg uh, industry so so we do focus on uh, pretty different uni- uh, industries from from cross enterprise perspective uh, all right so what i am going to do is potentially going to pick a uh, few use cases uh, the first one uh, i mean if you guys have any preference you can actually tell me i can uh, just provide you some f- uh, some quick overview about uh, the different use cases which we have and then uh, if if you have any uh, preferences just mention that on a chat but uh, i will i will just get started with one uh, so so that so the four dimension as you, as i mentioned right most of the use cases are divided into that the first one which i am uh, planning to pick up is what we call is a plug and predict so most of you have heard about auto ml uh, in general so this is again an auto ml solution but specifically focused uh, for a transactional related data so think from a use case and this is a cross enterprise solution which we have actually utilized in uh, life sciences and we have also deployed this solutions into telecommunication uh, industries uh, so 
in the life sciences industry also one of the things which we end up using from the data source uh, is patient journey related data so you actually end up getting each and every transaction which patient is making during journey for example uh, when he is going to meet the doctor what kind of procedure has been done on him what diagnosis has been reported uh, which drug he has been dispensed uh, which uh, commercial or payer uh, plan he is on right so we have a lot of information and we have that information more longitudinally present uh, into into this and one of the core use case and and most of the uh, the the use cases where we focus are mostly chronic in nature so so there is uh, so the so you need to ensure that once the patient are on a therapy how should we ensure that they are maintained on a therapy uh, for for a better uh, quality of life right so so there is a lot of use case which actually sits uh, in in how we can actually use that patient uh, related uh, data set of the patient journey so one of them is specifically identifying a diagnosis itself so i mean think from a uh, disease or 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 uh, for example the rare disease related use cases so in general if you if you go into the rare disease market on an average uh, it takes 6 to 8 year uh, to even diagnose a rare disease right and it almost get misdiagnosed just because uh, the prevalence is so low uh, in general right so so finding uh, the patients who potentially have that disease earlier is going to definitely help the patient to get into the therapy and uh, help with the life quality right so so one of the use cases which we actually uh, focus on is diagnosis where we actually look for identifying a patients with a particular disease right that's that's one of the scenario the second one you actually think from the treatment initiation right and this uh, again uh, goes uh, more from a perspective of can we uh, predict which treatment uh, patient is going to initiate on and there is a lot of different ways you can you can uh, go from from a treatment perspective uh, as well and uh, so if and just predict thing and it depend on the marker for example a patient is already metastasized from an oncology perspective or or he already have an uh, cancer right and then is a next metastasis happen so can we actually identify uh, that marker uh, before so that there is no delay happens uh, with, with respect to the treatment initiation so that's again one of the very very critical part part of uh, of the patient journey identification the other you other things you can think from a journey is the progression itself right so the page how the patient are progressing are are they progressing at a moderate pace or are they progressing much faster in that particular disease how we can actually control uh, those information and the again uh, the churn it's it's uh, because most of these are chronic in nature uh, so so the how do we identify uh, the patient who are potentially going to drop off and do we understand why they are dropping off because that can be actually then used to uh, take that uh, things back and improve the patient services program uh, associated with or, or 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 if there is a awareness issue so 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 this specifically focus on figuring out uh, the other and related issues right now just coming to the data as i mentioned right so we do actually start using a transactional data uh, and this could include a prescription prognosis diagnosis uh, related information and it's a very uh, temporal data in nature so one way to look at it is a discrete event but in continuous time uh, because they they mostly come in much more random uh, random time uh, time points right so what this plug and predict focuses on it's an auto feature engineering uh, technique which actually take this temporal data and then uh, utilize a uh, constraint based uh, genetic al genetic algorithms uh, with uh, to optimize the features now to optimize the feature you still need to take care of lot of scenarios which uh, which which involve the parsimony conditions uh it which involve that i i don't end up creating lot of correlated features into a system right so how do we control for those part and those are uh, something which is uh, handled uh, 
uh, through the constraint uh, within 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 the algorithm but one of the core concept if you if you think about what feature is right the feature is technically can be broken down into base operator uh, which is which is uh, basically the base feature combined with an operator right so just to give you an example uh, if you uh, everyone if you build any model you must have created a interaction features so interaction features is basically if you have a feature a and b and you have a multiplication as an operator you put them together you actually end up creating an interaction feature in this scenarios a and b are feature multiplication is an operator this is a very very simple example now uh, if if you start and it's is technically a tree now if if uh, if it's a and b multi uh, are multiplied and that multiplication get multiplied with uh, or ad added with any other or transformed do a lock transform on top of it then you end up adding another operator to, or on top of this feature right so this is a very very simple uh, setup for the feature but the another way to look at the feature is uh, you have a much complicated operators which are sitting such a temporal operator recency operators uh, in, in, into system uh, the operator can be a model in itself uh, so you basically build a sequential model predicted a churn and that churn become a feature for me so the way we break down the whole thing is you have a base you have aggregators and then uh, then how those aggregator interact with the base to create the tree and each tree represent a feature so that's that's what we actually the system automatically does using the transactional data and that's how we go and keep building uh, the solution so we have actually deployed this into a lot of different solution so there are benefits from two dimensions uh, again uh, when when we deploy uh, this uh, solution into industrial grade solution we need to take into account a lot of different consideration considering the scale part of it right so the current journey data is a, is a longitudinal in nature and we end up getting a really big uh, data sets from uh, from rwd which is real world data so the deployment how do we scale this solution and once you start looking at the configuration right so i can actually end up having a lot of different uh, interaction or configuration which can set because depending on the order I, I decide so a can have a multiplication operator recency operator so slope operator so i can have a lot of different operator and as i'm increasing the operator the number of combinations are increasing exponentially so we need to come up with a distributed way to uh, deploy this solution the, the, the whole solution has been deployed using a spark as one of the core framework it has been published within an aws marketplace uh as 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 one of the solution uh, again you need to start thinking about connection with the right databases uh part of it how the operate how output is going to get consumed right because once i create that feature i need to make that feature interpretable uh, at the end of the day so how do i extract uh that feature out extract them i uh, generalize in the rule base rule which the people can understand right so so you need to think from the consumer uh how the consumer is going to use that particular solution or consume that particular solution but you need to also think around the middle layer which is the scalability or the deployment part of it and just to give you some uh, some numbers uh, in in that situation so i think what we are observing it leads to a 50 to 70 percent time in reduction of the feature engineering and the current state of art right uh, in, in these scenarios are you people uh, start creating a lot of hypothesis related feature and they end up spending a lot of time uh, to build uh, so build those specific features out uh, so so it takes a lot of time uh, to even create those outcome and then uh, we when we actually deploy that uh, into different use cases we are also seeing on average uh, this approach also give us a 10 to 15 percent lift just because we are able to uh, explore the space much more comprehensively and one of the other use case just a parallel use case maybe i'll also talk about where we actually deployed it into non pharma uh, scenario mostly to a telecommunication space and their use case is even uh, more hard because uh, if you think the, the it's it's more into a digital space and uh, they actually have a uh, millions of customer hitting their website every week uh, so how do we and uh, similar kind of problem i think the drop off can directly add to in their use case is a churn 
or you can also have they have a issue related to the cart abandonment so the people add a product in the cart but they don't end up uh, purchasing it at the end of the day so can you and understand uh, the reason or the drivers for it but uh, one of the challenges just because the data is so massive for them and by the time they create a hypothesis related feature and come up with an inference uh, from that hypothesis related features uh, the system changes right uh, the the color related uh, banner or the functionality associated with it the campaign which they are running before uh, it change completely so the system become totally new uh, by the time they come up with the outcome so so the hypothesis in that scenario is not even an option uh, so so just wanted to caveat that there could be a scenario where the hypothesis uh, will not even work uh, overall all right i will just see if there is any other anyone have requested for any tile or i will pick another one quickly all right so i i think we have uh, some time so let me pick another uh, use case uh, which i will talk about is again i mean this is uh, also i will pick something which is uh, related in terms of sequence uh, just because now i i think uh, i just to build on the previous uh, journey related thing so if you think from a sequence perspective again uh, that you can also think in most of the marketing which is currently happening uh, in in just take a example of the life sciences firm uh, each hcp is bombarded with roughly 2800 times a year right uh, with, with with different marketing event so it's it's roughly 250 per day right so are they even going to look at my messages or content or and and they they actually bombarded with a different channel it could be through sms email calls uh, direct mail right so there there's a there are a lot of different ways you can actually reach reach them out so one one of the uh, use case which we or or a product which we have currently into the market uh, which is called verso is specifically focus on how we can uh, use the previous sequential data uh, from uh, uh, from from uh, from from the life sciences industry and we can actually use it to optimize our targeting effort so so and when we actually think from a targeting effort optimization it actually consists of who is the right customer who should who should i go next the second question you need to answer is which message should i go with what what should i send him the third is the cadence part of it which is the sequence what in which sequence should i uh, send this messages in and the fourth is of course the cadence also contain the time element into it which which uh which basically uh what what should the gap between two different cadence which i'm actually sending the doctor and which channel should i use uh, uh so because it's a multi channel scenario then which which channel should i end up using so it's it's very important uh from 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 a marketing that we orchestrate the different channel in a way that uh, one channel is helping me to improve the effectiveness of the other channels so that's that's one of the things which we are actually focus focus on and, and and there is a lot of different type of content uh, which involved uh, they end up creating uh, from safety perspective efficacy perspective there is a lot of different channel which which involves uh, involves into a system so uh, so this solution basically again utilize a deep learning fusion model uh, so we need to we need to learn the sequence for a system and uh, we need to also learn it so uh, in a way that we don't bias it by the type of channel for example if i go and meet and talk to a doctor directly that will have much much higher impact than if i just send him an email uh, overall right so i need to control for this biasness in the system when i'm optimizing the sequence otherwise the system will start uh, sending you the uh, preferred sequence right that's that's one one kind of control the other kind of control you need to also think about which is more a constraint uh, environment in this is i cannot send him a sequence during a blackout day uh, right 
uh, or, or there are other constraints. I, I can also there is a budget constraint into a system which we need to take care of. So I have actually have spended uh, or I'm going to spend X amount of dollars in, into the market. So so the budget constraint is there on, on a particular channel that also restrict the number of touch points I can have with any any of these doctors in general. So so there is a temporal constraint, there's a budget constraint. They are sometimes they have their own hypothesis which they want to override into a system. So the, we need to take them into account as well. So so depending on what what exactly it uh, we need to handle from the different perspective for for the optim uh, for the channel optimization, we need to uh, we need to take care of the setup. So first, learn the sequence how how the sequence is impacting the sales associated with it. The second, what we actually uh, focus on is the optimization part of it. So the optimization actually focus on generating the time and event and content uh, together and then evaluate it using uh, the effectiveness of that particular sequence on the outcome. Uh, so if, if you look from uh, this example, the first one, you see that there is a Salesforce call uh, and then you should send out an email after one day of the Salesforce call, right? So it actually evaluate uh, that particular sequence uh, and based on the evaluation, the system keep uh, optimized uh, the whole uh, optimize itself to figure out what's the right sequence uh, for and right content uh, for for that each and every doctor. So it actually has been optimized for at at a doctor level. Now, if you are actually uh, dealing for a generic brand, you will end up getting maybe uh, fifty thousand two hundred k. I think the last which we have actually deployed it for four hundred k different doctors. So you are actually optimizing for each and every doctor in this scenario. So you need to figure out a way to scale uh, the whole solution again uh, and need to uh, make it in a way that system auto orchestrate, take all the constraint into picture uh, from, from a business perspective. Right. So that's that's again one, one of the uh, just to show you one of the examples when we actually optimize it actually start giving you which date uh, associated uh, which channel should be sent on which date and with which which content and uh, there is a feedback mechanism which we need to take into account so for example I send out an email and that email doesn't open right if that doesn't open that also goes into an algorithm and algorithm knows that we have actually sent out an email where the doctor has not engaged and potentially we need a uh, different uh, framework to further make that sequence more optimized uh, in, in in this current setting. So it takes those uh, into account and then uh, we have actually deployed it to uh, multiple clients uh, as of now and we are actually op observing uh, impact across different dimensions and the way we actually measure one is the engagement in itself. It has a very high uh, impact on the engagement. Uh, what we are actually observing and the engagement we actually divide into personalization uh, of the promotion which basically in, in improve the engagement for the brand and the second is the share of voice uh, which is the consistent uh, for, from from what the customer are uh, talking about uh, at the end of the day and then we also improve the better coordination so what we have observed when we actually first went and start deploying this solution into into one of the uh, pharma client is uh, they end up sending the same they end up reaching out to the same hcp through different channel on the same day right so so the it's it's definitely not very well coordinated system because i i went and talked to him i send an email on the same day i send a speaker program on the same day uh, so that that's definitely is not very very coordinated system and the fourth is again it has a also has a good uh, impact on the sales and what we are actually observing is five to seven percent top line uh, improvement in the sales for uh, using this solution itself awesome with that maybe i will uh, just move to the slide uh, back all right so 
I'm, I'm just looking at time. I just want to have uh, some time for the Q&A. Uh, I think there are a few Q&A which we have. But before we get into q and I, I think I would like to hand over to Silky uh, to talk about uh, the career opportunities in ZS. Silky, over to you. Hi, hi, Prakash. So thank you so much for giving us the overview. I think I just have, uh, I'll take another 30 seconds. Uh, I think uh, you would have got an overview of what we do as a firm. Uh, but in case if you're interested to know about what all work do we do, I think data science is one small piece that we work on. But there are other uh, interesting areas as well, along with data science. And if you're interested, please log on to www.cs.com. And in terms of career opportunities, I think there were a few questions uh, about hiring. So we do have certain open opportunities in the data science space and also otherwise as well. Um, so I would request you to visit our uh, careers page on the website and look for all the open opportunities. Uh, we'll be reviewing your profiles and coming back to you as soon as possible. So thank you. Over to you, uh, Vibhor, if you may want to. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, wonderful, Prakash. Thank you so much for sharing your insights. We have a lot of high quality questions here. So the, this one question is from a fellow engineer at Infosys that says, how does a large corporation that's undergoing a digital transformation may, make a leap, leap from a standalone digital innovation to an industrialized scale? Right. So, yes, I think that's a very, very, very good question. Uh, so the digital transformation, right? Uh, again, I think that's, that's one of the core considerations which which we need to uh, think about when we talk about industrialization in general and we we have worked with clients uh, where we started uh, with building that core capability making them digitally aligned uh, and ensuring that all their data sources are being integrated building their data lakes before even we started with the use case development right because if 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 they are not uh, if the if the things are not all all your recipes are not uh, in place then it's the driving the value become uh, or the value you can still drive but it will be much much lower than it what it can actually give you so we do work with clients where we try to define a full vision it's not about just that's where either the first part comes into picture uh, of the zest which is shaping uh, so when when we start doing the shaping uh, component uh, then it's it's important that we look into the full architecture uh, starting with the involving the digital transformation data landscaping uh, and then the different use cases which which they can actually uh, drive at the end of the day so you you are you need to look uh, the overall rather than look them in silos because uh, all these components are very important to make any ai work in industry perfect perfect uh, so also, also Prakash, we have this one question by a lot of attendees. Some of them have been looking uh, forward for a career change in data science. Some of them are freshers. The question is, what is the one piece of advice you have for anyone who's starting a career in data science? Got it. So yes, uh, well, uh, so from, from a career uh, advice uh, perspective, I mean, if you're looking for a switch, so again, the data science itself has a multiple personas, right? I mean, it's the word itself uh, seems uh, it's it's one thing, but it's not. So the way we start defining uh, data science and because it, it's a very big field, if, if you look at uh, getting the data. So the way we uh, try to distinguish between them or the start distinguish between personas are a research uh, oriented uh, data scientist, right? Which focus on more on algorithm, uh, development they are they, and that's their passion uh, part of thing the second uh, the way we actually define is uh, applied data science which which is uh, and that's what most of these guys like is how can i uh, solve a business problem utilizing lot of different data science tool which exist uh, so that that is more an applied profile and the third one which is also uh, coming up a lot these days is a MLE or full stack uh, part of it. I think uh, we can also uh, think from, so the people coming from a software background, but they want to then move into data science. So, so they, can, they, they can still focus on, because they still are 
by heart software developer, right? But they really like to solve an AI problem. So there, I think they start growing into uh, machine learning engineers uh, kind of profiles. So depending on where you are starting and where, where your passion net about, I think first of all, you need to figure out which profile or persona you fit in. Uh, and you need to also think if it is a career career change for you, you need to uh, think about uh, what your strength is to start with. Uh, so if your your whole career has been spent, spent as a big data software engineer as a core, but now you want to l uh, go into data science, you need to think how, like how can I leverage that my last uh, previous experience uh, to grow my career in that uh, that pace, I think it's make more sense for you to grow as a machine learning engineer to start with. And again, I mean, that itself has a horizontal to it. So, so depending, so most important, just don't jump around. It's very important to understand which persona you fit the best and then build the, uh, that persona for yourself, uh, as you, as you come within data science. Great. Great, Prakash. So, so, so this one question, this is interesting. Uh, as deep learning, you know, this is by Pranjal Saxena. So with right. deep learning, we use very high end machines with GPU capacities. Will right. industries in our country in India adopt deep learning in the coming years? Is it something that you see happening in the next few years? Right. Okay. I think, uh, okay. So the question is specifically related to the India. Uh, right. So, Okay, so ZS, I think I've worked in uh, Indian company before. So I was uh, I was heading uh, the I was VP for Dream Eleven. I I think maybe most of you guys who are passionate in cricket maybe uh, may know about it. Uh, so uh, we within Dream Eleven, I mean, uh, so we actually automated almost everything in a backend uh, for them. Uh, so, and, and it's, it's not like the Indian companies are not going toward a deep learning. Uh, I think they, they are, uh, but it's very important. I think you, the point which you are raising, right. It's, it's the compute, uh, co compute and compute has a two, uh, component to it. One is when we're developing the model, other when we're deploying the model, right. And it's very important that, uh, we, we need to, when we think about a solution or when we architect a solution, we create a solution, which is much, uh, which, which actually also minimize the cost. So, so to, to the question, yes, Indian companies are using it just to give an example, uh, for, for a scenario where, where this compute become critical is one of the solution. I think I, I specifically talk about the NBA and we actually use a fusion network. Uh, there, so there is a sequential part to it, and then there is a uh, there is a dense layer, uh, which basically uh, in in synchronously they they are trained. We now the sequential part to it, you can actually solve using a LSTM uh, kind of models. Or a uh, lot of research has been done where they actually prove the LSTM and CNN performances for sequence are pretty much the same. Uh, right, the, not not much a difference. Whereas the CNN also comes with, and in some of the scenarios, right, it's a positional invariance comes into CNN. Uh, however, so so performance for both of them are very much the same. But when you think from a deployment perspective, the CNN model is much lighter and much easier to parallelize on GPU because the LSTM has a sequential dependency, so you cannot parallelize. So the compute time to execute for the CNN model is much lower. Uh, and when you compare with the LSTM is one is to three. So, so you are going to spend three X the money if you go and deploy the solution with the LSTM. So you definitely need to think about the architecture holistically. Again, it's not only the development and it's giving with a good result. You need to think beyond. So very, very good question, but yes, Indian companies are also adopting the deep learning. Great. Great, Prakash. So, uh, I, uh, so we are closing to five o'clock, and uh, with with that, we bring to an end of uh, you know an hour of wonderful insights and experiences. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Prakash and ZS for uh, collaborating with us, uh, as well as for all the attendees for joining us. Uh, do, do you have a closing statement, Prakash? Anything that you'd like to say before we sort of uh, wind this up? 
No, I think I no, I definitely want to thank Hirist. I think I uh, definitely I I like the questions which has been come up. I think they are they are uh, very very uh, interesting ones. Uh, definitely, uh, but uh, from from again from a career choice again, data science is a booming field in general, and it's it's going to grow, uh, and it's going to grow pretty much across uh, the industry, and again going to grow from an algorithm side and the compute side. with iot coming in right so that that's again one of the big area which is going to become very very big and there i think it's technology data science again coming together so it's very important when you think about a solution think uh, holistically rather than just solving it uh, at a poc level great great thank you thank you so much dr prakash for leading this session today thank you so much to all the attendees for staying with us for this one hour uh guys there's a small survey towards the end of this webinar if you uh, answer the the questions give us your feedback we'll be able to conduct better uh, webinars if you have any feedback at all and if you'd like to suggest a topic with uh, you, you'd want dr prakash or other people to cover in the future that'd be great uh, once again we hope you and your families your friends are all good you know you take care you take all the necessary precautions uh, in these pandemic times guys have a wonderful weekend keep coding have fun see you next time guys thank you so much